You ready? Okay. Hi! My name is Rachel and I'm here to tell you about some sauna safety. Um, Misha and I built this sauna from scratch in my mom's backyard and we put a lot of heart and soul into making it. And so I'm just asking that you watch the entirety of this video, even if you're a sauna expert, um, just so you stay safe and the sauna doesn't burn down. Uh, our intention for this sauna was for it to be a space of healing and release. Um, and so please just treat it as such. Um, treat it well and leave it better than you found it and we'll be good. Okay, so here's the sauna. And here is the fire extinguisher. Now, obviously this fire extinguisher is just for a case of emergency. If something catches on, side, catches on fire inside of the sauna, you're gonna wanna use this. So you'll come outside, and if you see this black part here, you know, you pull it and it won't come out, but if you just kinda of pop this black part off, you can pull the fire extinguisher out. And the instructions are here. But basically, you just pull this pin out, you point at the fire, and you squeeze this lever down and put out the fire. Hopefully, no one ever has to use this, but it's here for just in case. So before we go in, I just have some rules and suggestions we wrote down uh, just to ensure safety for everyone. Uh, so there's no drinking or drugs before or during using the sauna just because it's really not safe. You could really hurt yourself. Um, we also suggest that you drink lots of water before and during using the sauna. Um, do not sleep while using the sauna. Uh, it's also really dangerous. Um, and it's important to keep the sauna clean and clutter free um, just to decrease the chance of there being a fire. Um, I know everybody loves Remy, but there's absolutely no pets allowed in the sauna. Misha over here. Um, she's never been inside the sauna and I'd really like to keep it that way. Just so she doesn't try and come in, scratch up the door, cause any issues. Um, it'd be really unsafe for her there. Um, I'd also recommend that you do not take your electronics inside the sauna because really high temperatures could potentially damage them. Uh, if you feel like you need them, you want them really bad, it's fine. I would just recommend you keep them near the door on the floor of the sauna. We can show you where that would be, but um, it's the coolest part of the sauna. So if you need to bring your phone, just put it right next to the door on the floor. All right, let's go inside. So the first thing is our sauna has a lock on it and we have this here so that critters don't come inside. So you're gonna wanna lock it every time you leave it just to make sure no critters come inside or the door doesn't slam open and close. So to begin, you can unlock it. It's really simple. You come inside. So inside we have a thermometer over here, which is in Fahrenheit and Celsius, and a hydrometer. So the thermometer you're probably, probably familiar with, but the hydrometer tells you the humidity. It is really humid today. It's around 70% humidity. Normally it's around 20, um, but these are just numbers to kind of help you tell what you like in the sauna um, and to keep track of that. Over here, we just have a very simple timer. When you come in to sauna, it's a really good idea just to flip it over and start timing yourself because it's really easy to lose track of time in here, especially if you don't bring your phone, um, which I recommend. It's a little nice to disconnect, but Normally after 15 or half an hour, I take a break. It's up to you. Um, and yeah, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you come in here to start using the sauna, the first thing you need to do is you're gonna open this ashtray down here. So you open this ashtray, you take it all the way out. It's filled with ash from the last sauna's fire. And we, here we have an ash bucket. So you're gonna need to try to open it. I have to put this down. Oh, stop. Yeah. All right, so you open the ash bucket and you dump the ashes in. 
This ash bucket just keeps the ashes from coming out and starting a fire outside. So you take that, that ash bucket lives over by the back door of the house. Um, so really you'll have to either bring it over here or walk this all the way over to the back side of the house and dump out the ashes. Um, it's really important to do this at the beginning of each sauna session because if the ashes aren't dumped, there's not enough airflow to start the fire. Um, so then you'll come back in and you'll put this tray back inside. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna build the fire. So here is our wood stove and here's our door. So in here, you are going to put paper and then you can put kindling, um, maybe a fat wood stick and some larger uh, wood logs. And then we have matches down here um, and you'll light the paper on fire and once you get the paper on fire, you're going to immediately close the door. And it, sorry, I forgot to mention, while you're doing this, the ashtray, you want it to be open just about an inch um, to get that airflow starting for the fire. So you have this ab open about an inch, you put all your fire stuff in, you light it. Once the flame catches, you close the door because the fire actually catches better um, with the door closed. So you wait, and once the fire has caught, then um, you can close this door, the ashtray door, all the way. Um, it might take a few tries to get the fire going, but once you have it going, you're all good to go. Um, now for me, this is one of the most important parts of the video as far as not getting the sauna caught on fire. And that is any time that you are not actively starting the fire or adding logs, this door here needs to be closed. You need to push it to make sure it's closed all the way. And the ashtray door should be closed as well, unless you're trying to get a little airflow going to, to start the fire. Um, and if you're doing those things, then you shouldn't cause a fire in here. Um, but yeah, so once you get your fire going, it's gonna take some time before the sauna gets up to the temperature you want it. Um, so once you get the fire going, maybe you add a few more logs, but now would be a really good time to go inside, bring out some water, some water bottles maybe. Um, we actually have a bucket in here that we're using now. We might be using something different later, but it just has some water in it. Um, and you can use it to pour a little bit of water on the rocks up here um once the sauna is really hot maybe around like 120 plus degrees you can pour some water on to get some steam going in here um but normally in the winter thus far it's taken about an hour for it to warm up in here probably in the summer it'll take a lot less time but in that hour time span yeah you can clean this place up a little bit get your water ready get your robe on um, you probably want to come out once in that hour time span, maybe twice and check the fire, make sure it's good, maybe add another log. Um, yeah. How much water can you use to pour on the rocks? So I would recommend that you do not use a lot of water. Just start with a little bit, kind of dribble a little bit on and make sure it's evaporating. So you'll see it kind of like evaporate off the rocks and disappear. Their water marks will disappear off the rocks. Um, I would not pour a lot on because if the water gets all the way down to the stove, it'll damage it. Um, so just pour a little bit. You can always add a little bit more. Just do little increments at a time. And does the stove get hot? The stove gets really, really hot. So these black parts, including basically anything over here, you don't want to touch because it'll get really hot. So it's important to be mindful in here. Um, there's a lot of different ways to sit in the sauna. One of the ways you can sit is with your back against this wall. But you just want to be mindful to not accidentally touch this because it'll get very hot. Um, this piece of rock that it's on will not get hot though. So this is safe to touch. Um, 
And yeah, you get extra brownie points if in that hour or whatever time it takes to warm up, that you come in here and do a quick little vacuum to get all of the ash that fell out and other things. All right, so once the fire gets going, if you need to open the door or the ashtray for any reason, the door for adding logs, the ashtray for increasing airflow if your fire gets really low, um, I recommend that you use this piece in here. Um, you can use it to open the door like this and close it. And you can use it on the ashtray as well. Um, and I just recommend using it because those two things get very hot. Um, and it'll live right down here on the stone. Um, but so while you're waiting for the sauna to heat up and you're checking back on it, um, I would recommend when the sauna is around 100, 110, that's when I would recommend to get in. You can get in at whatever temperature you like. But if you get in at that temperature, um, you can start to acclimate to the heat. It's not too hot then. Um, and you can sauna at any temperature you like. Um, if you just like to be warm and kind of relax in the warmth, you might like 120. Um, and if you really want to sweat it all out, you might like more around 150 um, or anywhere in between there. Um, we just recommend that you don't go over or close to 200 degrees because that's when water will start boiling and it's really dangerous. Um, if it ever gets too hot here for you, you can always just come over here and open the door and get some airflow in. Um, and if it's really too high, you know, you can open the door all the way and, and get out and wait for it to cool down. Um, so yeah, the way you make it cooler is by opening the door or just not adding any logs to the fire. And if you want it to get hotter, um, you can slowly be adding logs to the fire. So I would not recommend packing the stove full of logs um, because you would have a huge fire and it's really bad for the stove to have such a big fire in it. Um, maybe having like three to four logs in at a time with which as they burn down if you want to add like one log at a time to slowly increase the temperature and keep the fire going you'll increase the heat um, but just don't do too much at once also for yourself if you're adding one log it'll gradually get warmer and it'll be more um, pleasant for you as far as clothing goes um, you're welcome to wear a robe. Um, my mom has a bunch of robes that we bought for just the purpose of this or if you have your own. Um, a lot of people like to sauna naked, but if you'd like, you can also wear something you would wear kind of in a swimming situation. Um, and obviously if you're coming in to make a fire, you can obviously wear your shoes. But I would recommend if you come into sauna, that you either leave your shoes right here at the door, which is also right here is where you would leave your electronics if you brought any in, since it's the coolest place, or just leave your shoes outside. Um, maybe we'll put a table out there for you to put other stuff. Um, and just be mindful if you come in here with a robe or other things that you take off, um, just to make sure you know, you're not gonna drape them over the wood stove. You wanna kind of keep them near the door too. Um, and just be mindful, maybe you like to bring in a towel um, so you can like wipe off your sweat right before you go back outside. Um, and obviously if you need to take a break in the sauna um, and it's temperate outside, you can kind of take breaks outside. If it's too cold outside, you don't want to shock your body from really hot to really cold. So you can go inside the house and kind of take a break and come back and do more. Last but not least, when you're finished saunaing and you're ready to go back inside, go home, whatever, um, it's totally fine if the fire is still burning in the wood stove. Uh, the only thing that you need to do before you leave is make sure that the door is closed all the way and you can check by just pressing on it and that the ashtray is closed all the way. You can also use this piece. So just make sure those two things are closed and if they're closed all the way, the fire can still be going. Um, and then you'll just take everything you brought with you because like we said, we don't want any clutter in here just to maintain safety. Um, so you'll take your stuff, you'll grab whatever you have um, and you can exit the sauna. And once you come out, you'll just close the door and you will lock it. And once you've done that, you're good to leave. Oh, you made it all the way to the end of the video. So that's good. I really hope you enjoy the sauna and we hope that you really like it because we do 
and happy sounding.